with J. Scott Savage, who is the author of Mysteries of Co, Fires of Invention, and The Far World, and many other books that are really, really good. Um, and first of all, thank you for taking a couple minutes to sit down with me. Thank you for having me here. Okay, so first of all, I really, really loved Cove, and I'm super duper excited for the next book, as well as I've just started Far World, and I'm roughly at part two, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited. I actually am just finishing the edits for book two, which is called Gears of Revolution. So. Okay, so that's a cool title. I can't title, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, first question is, um, a lot of people time, sometimes say that they have like this one core idea or scene that they want to put in a book, and then they write an entire book around it. Yeah. Was there something like that for Cove, and what was it? There was. I normally start with characters. Like when I wrote Far World, it started with the idea of what if there was a boy in a wheelchair and a girl who lived in a world where she was immune to magic, but everyone had magic, and then everything built around it. With Mysteries of Cove, this started with the idea of a mechanical dragon. My wife and I went to go see this Broadway musical, Wicked, and when you walk in the theater, before the curtains even open, up above the stage is this huge mechanical dragon. And I walked in and looked at that, and I was like, I have to write a book about kids building a mechanical dragon, you know? So that was, that was the moment, and then the other pieces came together. So how did you come up with an idea of a city where creativity is outlawed? Have you ever been in a situation where it felt like people were trying to stop you from being creative? It actually, in this case, I have a nephew who is one of the most creative kids I've ever met. His name is actually Trenton. Um, and he gets in trouble a lot at school, um, and sometimes those two go hand in hand. In fact, one time he was, he had a plastic water bottle and he was kind of popping it, you know, in class, just kind of, <laughs> and his teacher said, you know, throw away your water bottle. And he said, I can't. And she said, why not? And he said, um, I'm building a raft out of plastic water bottles. And she's like, really? And he goes, yeah. So his parents heard about that and they said, did you tell your teacher that? And he said, yeah. And they said, okay, then you're gonna build a raft out of plastic water bottles if that's what you told your teacher. So they got this huge chicken wire frame, they built this raft and he floated it down the Provo River. And so when I was writing this story, I knew they were inside a mountain. I knew they were building this dragon. And I was looking for kind of who is my, my central character going to be. And I thought of Trenton. And suddenly those two pieces came together. And it was like, what, what is the worst place that you could build a mechanical dragon in a city sealed inside of a mountain where creativity is against the law, right? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah probably the worst place to build a mechanical dragon. Honestly. Exactly. Um, so the relationships between all your characters are really detailed and really in-depth. Um, how do you keep track of them all, and what do you think when you're designing relationships with your characters? So, um, one of the things that I do specifically is, is I try to really understand what drives each character. And in a way, it can feel like almost labeling a little bit. But I've had people say, for example, um, they say, well, you have this love triangle in your book. And it's like, no, it's not a love triangle at all. It's a, it is a choice triangle or a decision triangle. So you've got Simony who believes that everything she's been told is true and that creativity is bad. And she's such a nice person that you kind of want to accept that. You know, you can see her point of view. And then you've got Callista who's saying, no, everything the city says is wrong, creativity is good. Um, and she's very, like, uh, edgy, you know, she's she's not all the nice things that Simony is. And Trenton is in between because he believes what Simony believes, but his heart believes what Callista believes. And so I try to make sure that, that even the smallest characters, like I love Harry Potter, I mean I think that, that most readers do. With J.K. Rowling, I think that she takes every little character, like Colin Creevy is such a minor character, but everyone knows Colin Creevy, right? It's the kid with the camera who was, you know, following Harry around and everything. And so for me, I try to, if I'm going to introduce a single character, any character, I want to know what they want, what they're trying to do, what drives them. And that really helps bring them alive for me. And it also allows me to use them in future books, like in book two, and especially in book three, which you won't find out until you read book two, um, we're going to see Simony and Angus and um, obviously Callista um, and even Clyde, along with another new character that I've added in book two. And I think when you see that character, you'll get that same feel again. Oh, I know what drives her. 
Yeah, that, that's really cool. I try, um, I've thought several times that you could change the perspective at any time in the book, and the main character would still be understandable, and you could still understand their goals. Like, you could go to Angus, or you could go to Simone, you could go to Callista, you could go to any, Clyde, even. You could go to <laughs> anyone, and they would still make sense as a main character, and you could still see what drives them, which is one of the things that I really, really like about the book. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That, that means a lot. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> There's a character named Leo Babbage in the book, yep. um, and then that really reminded me of Babbage, and Ada Lovelace, who um, were pretty much the first computer programmers. You got it. <laughs> so, how often do you look to history for names and themes during your books? I try to, I wouldn't say 100% of the time, but I would say at least 50% of the time, I want kind of an Easter egg, that if you actually do the research and, and look, and, and it was actually, Leo was the first name of one of the people who originated computers, and Babbage was the last name, and so I combined those two. And it's just a little Easter egg that's there. Sometimes I'm just looking for a feel, like Angus didn't mean anything at all, but it just kind of sounds, Angus is kind of a harder name, you know, he's, he's a tough guy, he's very, you know, pragmatic and everything, and that name just felt right. Um, with Callista, obviously, we talk in the book about what her name means. So I'd say about half the time I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah, that's really cool. I tried to do some things like that. I love that you looked that up. That's awesome. How important was you in the book to have a strong female character like Callista? Um, the book definitely does pass quite a few tests <laughs> that, re that revolve around having a strong female character. So how important was it for Callista to be a female? So I think that there's a couple of things that go on. Um, one is how do you define a strong female character? Because a lot of times people will say, oh, this has a strong female character. And you're like, no, I mean, she fights people. You know, it's, it's a kick butt character, right? But it's not strong emotionally. And so I wanted Callista to have very strong beliefs that, that forget the fact that the first time she meets Trenton, she beats him up, right? Um, but she's a strong, person from character. And then the second part is that there are what are called tropes in middle grade that are things you know that, that you, things you see a lot, right? And one of the common middle grade tropes is that the boy is the one who's daring and and goes out on these adventures and the girl is very smart and and cautious. Think like Hermione and Harry, but there's a lot more examples. And and I wanted to totally switch that up and say they're both smart, they're both good mechanics. But Callista is the one who's gonna go, I'm climbing up the vent, you can come with me or not, I don't care, I'm, I, I'm leaving, you know? And, and it, made her a lot, it made her a more fun character to write. So. Yeah, uh, those characters are definitely pretty fun to write. And, <laughs> Would yeah. you be the one climbing up the vents? I don't know, at the, like sometimes I'll be in the mood where I'm just like, I'm going bye bye, I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> you can come if you want to, but sometimes I'm like, Fine, I'll do it. That's probably a good balance. Your parents yeah. probably appreciate the fact that you're not just randomly heading out. Like, I'm gonna go climb this now. Right. Yeah. So I'm really excited for your fall tour. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing there and what you're excited for, if it's not too much of a spoiler? Yeah, no. Um, so um, this is actually kind of fun because Shadow Mountain, one of the things they do that, that a lot of publishers don't do is they typically send you out on a, on a tour if you do middle grade. and and. We visit elementary schools and I have two, I don't know, maybe three specific things that I do. The, the kind of theme of the tour is that you can change the world, that anyone can change the world. So I, I ask kids, I'm, I'm like, okay, raise your hand if you believe that you personally can change the world. And this is elementary school kids. And I'd say maybe 20% of the kids raise their hands. And even then they're kind of looking back and forth, like, did I get the right answer? And then I tell them about three kids who each had one little idea that changed the world. So um, I tell them about Alex who started Alex's Lemonade Stand and she ended up dying of cancer, but Alex's Lemonade Stand has raised more than $100 million to cure pediatric cancer just doing lemonade stands. So the idea of just a lemonade stand or uh, Malala Yashevsky who you know ended up winning a Nobel Peace Prize and stood up for what she believed about girls being able to to be educated and go to school and have rights in an area where that was pretty dangerous at the time. And then a, a boy named Ryan Hurljack, who um, uh, has brought water to over 700,000 people in African villages. And then I, I tell them, these are all kids your age or younger who had one little idea that changed the world. And I think you get that. I mean, I think that you are changing the world, you know? Um, 
And then the second thing that I try to do is leave something that teachers can use behind. And one of the big things that I had teachers tell me is that when they talk to kids about writing, that there are some kids who you just say write, and I mean, they're just like, you know, they're gone, they're writing their story. But there are other kids that you might as well hand them like a hammer and nails and say, build a house. And so I came up with four steps, how to come up with a great story idea in less than five minutes. And it's something where you just say, okay, who or what is your hero? It can be a man, a dog, a boy, a girl, a tree, a man-eating, tap-dancing, cheese-wearing squirrel that lives on Mars, you know? I'm make a story about a man-eating, cheese-eating squirrel on Mars now. <laughs> Don't you? I know, exactly. And kids do. And so that's what we do is we have this tour. And the exciting thing is that Shadow Mountain came back and said, okay, so we did this eight-week tour. It went so well, would you consider possibly touring year round, like doing the entire school year. And I, I wouldn't be gone all the time, but like three weeks on the road, two weeks home, three weeks on the road. And I'm like, I would, I would so love to do that. It's one of my favorite parts. So um, I visited 25 states uh, last fall. Um, and my goal, I, I don't know if I'll make it to Alaska or Hawaii, but I, I would really like to get out across all the United States and, and you know, just kind of spread that message that, that creativity does, does change the world. Yeah, that sounds super awesome. I'll be sure to be, some, to be at one of them. I, I will definitely make it to your hometown. I will do that for sure. Yay. <laughs> Can you tell everyone to, where to find you if they want to know more about you? Sure. Um, basically, if you just look for J. Scott Savage, it's like Facebook is J. Scott Savage. Twitter is at J. Scott Savage. Instagram is J. Scott Savage. My website is www jscottsavage.com. My email is scott at jscottsavage.com and I love to hear from readers or aspiring writers or people who just want to talk about books. It, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Thank you for taking a couple minutes to sit down with me. Thank you so much again for having me. I appreciate it.